Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Sales Performance Improvement Radio. I'm your host, Harry Hansen. Great to be back with you again. It's been a while, a week or two since I've dropped a brand new podcast. I've been uh, a little bit delayed on uh, on uh, on some things and that's why I'm so late but I'm glad to be back with you. I'm super excited because today I've got two pretty big announcements that I want to share with you guys as well as share two additional um, project management frameworks that I have, uh, I, I want to share that I think will make a big difference for not only your sales operations and sales enablement efforts, but whatever kind of projects you're trying to tackle in your business during this uh, brand new second quarter that we are in here in 2022. So stick with me. For over 15 years, I ran a successful outsourced sales enablement and consulting firm before it was acquired by Rise Holdings in 2020. But while I was able to help hundreds of my own clients improve their sales productivity, marketing effectiveness, and grow their revenue, the sales growth game is always changing. Every year brings new challenges to growing sales as technology, competition, economic conditions, and customer buying behavior change. In these turbulent times, how do you improve sales and marketing and grow revenue when you're new to your leadership position or you don't have the right resources in place or you're just battling dysfunction inside your own company? That's the question, and this podcast will give you the answers. These days, I'm on a new quest to discover what's working in today's dynamic sales and marketing environment and bringing those treasures and insights back to you. My name is Terry Hansen, and this is Sales Performance Improvement Radio. Okay, so first let's get uh, let's get on to some some of the uh, big announcements that I have. I've been super excited to share some of this news with you, and uh, to kind of build up to these announcements and to share maybe just a little bit of backstory and context. As as you know, back in two thousand five, I started my own. Um, outsourced sales training and sales enablement and consulting company. And I ran that for 15 years and I really had a lot of great experiences working with companies all around the country in, uh, in supporting their sales teams, their sales management and uh, their executive teams and in helping really do uh, lots of great things in their organizations from improving their marketing effectiveness to growing sales revenue to improving their customer journey and uh, improving sales uh, effectiveness, all of those kinds of things. And in 2020, my company was acquired by Rise Holdings and I joined their organization for a time uh, prior to putting in my notice and transitioning over to a brand new company. And so announcement number one that I'm super pumped about is I've, uh, I, uh, this week I'm starting actually my second week at a cloud computing tech company based out of California called Packet Fabric. I'm the new director of sales operations and enablement, and I'm super jazzed about this opportunity to partner with uh, this, this seven-year-old company that's uh, really heading towards the moon and doing some, some great, great things. And so my role with this uh, new company is to really really do a, a couple of things, just a, really a continuation of what I've been doing over the last 15 years, but r- really helping to increase the efficiency and effectiveness of, of selling and, and, and growing sales revenue with all the strings that are attached to that, as well as a variety of other things. Uh, but what this means to you is that I've got myself a brand new laboratory for experimentation and uh, working deep in the SaaS and the networking as a service, the NASS, NAS world um, with this cloud computing company provides me an opportunity, a fresh laboratory to to try out new uh, sales operations and sales enablement tactics and strategies and see how they work and share the uh, and share the results with you guys each and every single week. So I'm hoping this uh, this new context, this new environment that I'm in will provide a rich source of great uh, of great insights about what's working right now to streamline, simplify, and improve the sales process and improve the sales performance of the sales, uh, uh, the sales development reps, of account managers, of account executives, and uh, you know anybody selling in the part in partner channels or whatever the case might be. So that's what I'm uh, super focused on these days and excited to share some things with you about. So those are the two big announcements. Number one, I've got a new job and partnering with Packet Fabric. Number two, I've got a brand new laboratory uh, to, that will help uh, reveal some great insights uh, for all of you. So I hope this is a... Um, I hope this will uh, produce some really terrific things over the next several months and years as as you and I are together. So, but um, you, you know, after first uh, the first week of working with this new uh, this new company, uh, there's been several projects that have been dumped into my lap that I'm super excited about, and uh, I've been reminded of how critical it is to have a couple of really go-to frameworks, templates, 
kind of, yeah, just, just frameworks, methodologies, if you will, when it comes to managing projects. Now, I'm sure you've managed several projects in your time and you've got some go-to tactics and strategies that you use, but if you don't, or even if you do, let me add two go-tos uh, that I have, one that I've used for a long, long time and swear by it. And then, and the second one is actually one that I was just made aware of this last week by my, by my new boss. And I found it so helpful, so useful that I wanted to share it with you here today. Uh, so the first framework, uh, project management framework, really does a good job at helping you and I as project managers, whether we're an executive or a sales manager or in revenue operations or sales operations or in enablement, you know, there's always projects that we have to wrestle, right? So uh, the first framework uh, that I, I really recommend using is the ADDIE model. Uh, ADDIE is an acronym. It's, uh, it's spelled A-D-D-I-E. And I've mentioned this before, so I won't go into too much detail, but Addy does a great job at helping you and I as project managers answer the uh, answer the uh, what exactly what what is the process we should be following, why should we be doing this project in the first place, how should it be conducted, and uh, and when. Uh, so Addy is an acronym again. It stands for analysis, design, development, implementation evaluation. So if we've got a project, the very first thing that we want to do is start conducting some good analysis and research, learning what the problems and issues and challenges are, but also what's causing those to really get down to the root causes and find out what all the needs are, what all the requirements are in order for this project to be completed successfully, right? Then we move on to the design phase where we get out a sheet of paper and we draft and sketch a blueprint, an architectural blueprint of, of what of what the solution needs to look like, uh, what the training program might needs to look like, what the compensation plan needs to look like, what the new uh, modified sales process needs to look like, whatever the solution or the fix is, uh, whatever the thing that needs to be created, uh, that this is the design stage where we just architect it, right? And then we pass it around to all the decision makers and stakeholders and we get it approved and everybody nods their head and gets some good buy-in. And then once that happens, we move on to the development stage where we actually build it. We build the compensation plan. We just, we, we actually create the training itself. We, we, uh, you know, we, we create the video, we design the, the, the sales collateral piece, whatever we, we actually create the thing, right? And then once we've created it, we're gonna test it to make sure it works and works well. And then once it works and works well, then we move into the implementation stage where we publish it. We we do the training with the salespeople. We help them understand what to do and how to use it. We uh, roll it out publicly uh, publicly at all uh, at an all hands uh, all hands meeting, um, you, you know, for the whole team. But we just make it public. We implement it. We we publish it. Uh, we go live with it, right? And then after a certain period of time, two weeks, one month, 60 days, 90 days, whatever the case might be, we have to evaluate. That's the last step in the ADDI process where we evaluate how well this training program or this new process or this thing that we created, how well you know, we did at solving some of the original problems that it was designed to solve. So the ADDI ADDIE framework is not new by any means. It's typically used by instructional designers to create training programs, but, but any project manager, any executive who's got a task at hand uh, can follow these five simple steps to, uh, you, you know, to, to bring the project to completion. So that's the first project management framework that I really want to recommend to you. And again, it does a good job at answering the question is what, what are we doing this? Uh, you know, what, what steps should we follow to bring this project or this task to completion? Why are we doing this in the first place? That that's get answers in the analysis phase. What's the problem? Is it worth solving? What's causing it? What are the benefits that are going to come when we do solve it? So it, it, it does a good job at help answering the why question. It also helps answer when each step happens, what comes first, what comes second, what comes third, and when things should happen. Um, but it also answers how it should be conducted, right? And it's in a, in a systematic kind of linear, in a linear fashion. But the problem with Addy as I as I've realized actually this last week is it doesn't really do a good job at answering the who question. 
the who question. So quick story, uh, this last week, my first week on the job, we, um, my boss and I were, were discussing a particular project. This was, um, the company has, a, um, sells a, a subscription based service to a network that they own. And when companies, when customers sign up for these, this, this, ne- this, this network service, right and their annual contract ends they go through a natural renewal process well apparently the renewal process is very time consuming it's very manual lots of different steps and it's kind of pain in the rear end and so six months ago the company started exploring opportunities to automate this renewal the sales renewal process to make it much more streamlined and efficient well it's coming up on the end of that 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 project and it's about ready to roll out and so then it, it turns to my attention about how sales operations and enable can help support the rollout of this new tool to the sales teams, et cetera. Well, turns out that there's actually quite a few stakeholders in different departments that need to add their feedback onto what happens, how it happens, and all these kinds of things. And so I asked some of the questions and my boss said, have you ever heard the acronym RACI before? R-A-C-I. And I said, RACI, nope, never heard of it. And he explained, well, it stands for respond, who's responsible for the project, who's accountable for the project, who needs to be consulted as part of the project, and who needs to be kept informed in the project. And after he recommended that uh, framework to me, I quickly did some research and read up on it. And I was, I was really impressed at how well this, the second framework, project management framework, RACI, does at, at, at dividing up and, and determining who's responsible for what aspects of the project. So Addy does a good job at getting us, giving us a process and giving us kind of a timeline and reasonings, but who's, who's in charge of taking what pieces and who's responsible for what? Well, Racy helps answer that question. So with the time that we have left, I wanted just to go over this acronym Racy and rec- and give you an example of how it might be used. So again, R stands for responsible. Really, who is responsible for completing the tasks? Who's the engineer? Who's the button pusher? Who's the designer? Who's the programmer? Who's the who's the actually one going to get the tasks? done needed to bring the project to a completion. So that's kind of denoted by the word R or the letter R, um, you know, who's responsible, who's going to actually do the tasks. The A is who's accountable, who owns this task or this project, who has ultimate decision-making authority, who signs off on when, when it's done, who, who, who's basically the owner, right? Uh, and C is is uh, consulting. Who needs to be consulted? Who needs to lend their feedback and their ideas and their support? Um, you know, as things are going on, who 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 needs to be consulted with? Uh, there's obviously lots of stakeholders, usually on various projects. So, and they need to have their ideas, their needs, their requirements, their feedback um, contributed so that all the needs can be met. They're not necessarily button pushers and and engineers who are going to do the tasks. But uh, or nor are they ultimately the ultimate decision makers and and, and have sign off authority. Uh, So they're not accountable and they're not responsible, but they do need to be consulted with. So who are those stakeholders? And last but not least, I is who just needs to be kept informed as to the progress of the job. You know, is there some other stakeholders that don't necessarily need to be consulted with? They're not doing the work. They don't need to sign off, but they do, do need to be in the loop, if you will. So um, with those kind of roles and responsibilities in place, let me share with you. Hopefully uh, uh, this doesn't look too backwards. I think this looks backwards. So dang it, I'll have to fix that. So, But uh, here's a simple little graph and chart, even though it's backwards. I should figure out a way to do this. So I apologize that it's backwards. But so over here on the right hand side, we have <laughs> SCTAT. That's uh, terrible. Anyway, so this is a uh, task number one task number two, task number three, four, five, and six, and seven. So these are all the tasks that might need to be completed in a particular project. Okay, and let's say, for example, that we've got several people, several stakeholders that need to participate. We've got John, we've got uh, Katie, we've got Mark, and we've got Beth. And say those four people are stakeholders. And um, now in each one of these tasks, these individuals probably are gonna play different roles. So we just create a simple grid. We've got all of the tasks listed on the right-hand side of the page 
or on a spreadsheet. And then we've got the names of the stakeholders running across the top horizontally. So we've got a vertical access with all of the tasks that need to be completed. And along the top, the horizontal access, we've got the names of the stakeholders. Now we've got this grid, right? Now all we need to do is just start off with task number one and determine who is responsible? Who's the button pusher, the engineer, the person actually gonna do the work related to completing this task? And in this case, well, that's gonna be Katie. Katie's the one, so we're gonna put a little R uh, under Katie's name for task number one. Okay, so who's gonna be accountable? Who actually has sign off authority? Who owns this task? Well, that's John, so we're gonna put a little A underneath his name. Uh, okay, great. Now, who just needs to be consulted because their feedback and insights are pretty important as to as it relates to this particular task? Well, that's Mark. So we're going to put a little C under his name. And last but not least, who just needs to be kept informed as to the status and the progress of the of the task or the project? Well, that's Beth. So we're going to put an I next to her name. So you can go down the list of tasks needed to complete a certain project, and you can place these letters next to the stakeholders names and, and kind of quickly determine what role people play. And so after you're done kind of creating this grid, then you can have kind of a, a quick team meeting and say, okay, these tasks, here's who's doing what, et cetera. And after everybody's nodding their head and on, on uh, you know, in agreeance, then, then you can charge forward. There's no confusion as to who does what and who needs to be involved and who needs to sign off. And there's none, there's none of this confusion or ambiguity or complexity or contention or, or misunderstanding. So good project management really does require clear expectations on who does what. And unfortunately, uh, at the ADDIE model or ADDIE framework doesn't, doesn't really address the who part. Uh, but Racy does a fantastic job at, at kind of solidifying that piece itself. So I recommend both of those uh, frameworks, both of those models to you um, this quarter as you are looking at completing certain objectives uh, this quarter, or certain key results that you want to knock out. And uh, so don't forget to use the Addy model and the RACI models and frameworks to help you accomplish your second quarter goals. So anyway, I hope these uh, have helped you. I hope these uh, give you some food for thought. And I I'm sure you've got some projects right now that you're working on that you can apply both of these things to, to help you make sure you hit your targets and, and get there uh, more quickly, more efficiently, and ensure that you'll actually get the end uh, get to the end result on schedule, on target, on budget, all of those kinds of things. So great to be with you. Uh, as always, uh, be sure you uh, uh, be sure if, if this has helped you, then be sure to uh, uh, click the like button, push your comments down below in the comment section. If you have questions or if there's other things you want to understand about this or our future topics that you want me to focus on and cover, please post those down below. Click subscribe, click like, share this with those uh, in your organization that you think it'd be helpful for. And uh, anyway, can't wait to be with you next time right back here on Sales Performance Improvement Radio. Take good care. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Hey, it's Terry again. Thanks so much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. I wanted to extend a special invitation for you that I really think might make a difference for you and your organization. You know, growing sales in any organization is tough, primarily because while you and I really are trying hard and, and doing our very best, we're still humans <laughs> and we're, we're, we're constantly battling dysfunction and problems internally with our, our sales playbooks and content and CRMs and sales training and all the data and analytics, our sales processes, the onboarding and compensation plans, all of those things play a role in, in growing and scaling revenue. So how do we get to the point where we can really grow sales when we're battling so much dysfunction internally in a variety of different areas? Well, the answer is we ultimately just need a really good toolbox. Uh, sales enablement tools designed specifically for your and my trade. I'd like to introduce to you the weekly sales enablement toolbox newsletter. It's a customized newsletter specifically for your business. And the best part is it delivers the right tools to solve the right problems when you need them. All you do is select the topics that you want the newsletter to focus on each week, and uh, it's delivered right to your inbox via email each week. And the best part is, of course, it's free. So click the link in the description uh, to this particular show or episode to sign up for the uh, Sales Enablement Toolbox newsletter and select the topics that you'd like to focus on. I can't wait for you to start receiving it and really get your hands on the tools for the trade that you need to continue to grow sales inside your organization. So thanks again and can't wait to see you soon.